Karma. is sometimes understood, and maybe your ordinary dictionaries give it to you, as the law of cause and effect. But actually, it comes from the root tree, which in Sanskrit means to act or to do. And the basic idea of karma is that it is action which always involves the necessity for other action. As the Buddha once expressed it, this arises, that becomes. Now this isn't quite the same thing as cause and effect. It is rather the idea of linkage. For example, when I pick up this brush, I lift it by one end, and the other end comes up. Now we could say, this is cause and effect. Although this would be a rather cumbersome way of thinking about it. I could say, for example, that the coming up of the brush at this end is the effect of the cause, my lifting it at this end. But we don't ordinarily think so complicatedly about it. We think in a simpler fashion, namely, that to pick up this end is also to lift up that end because it's all one. So in the same way, Buddhists and Hindus who follow the idea of karma believe that life and death involve each other in the same way that the two ends of the brush, lifting up one involves lifting up the other. So in this way, living involves dying. We wouldn't say that the cause of death is birth, but birth and death go together and they are inseparable. The basic idea of this link is interrelatedness, interlockedness, so that death and life, as I said, imply each other. So that you might, speaking from the standpoint of Indian philosophy, of Hinduism, of Buddhism, you might pick an argument with Hamlet and say, to be or not to be is not the question. These are not alternatives. They are things that go together just like up and down, back and front, solid in space. Now there's another aspect to karma which needs to be considered here. And that is that karma also involves the idea of the continuity of pattern. You know, strictly speaking, Buddhists don't believe that there is any soul entity which passes from one life to another. There is no sort of fixed I or fixed ego which uh, once was an animal and then became a man and then became an angel and then eventually became a Buddha or something like that. The idea of karma as the linking factor between the various lives is what we might call continuity of pattern. For example, Consider an army regiment. A certain regiment goes on year after year after year. Old European regiments, for example, have existed for hundreds of years. And yet the personnel of those regiments, and even the barracks in which they are stationed, are entirely changed. In the same way, a university. Harvard University has existed for a long time. Oxford for a lot longer. And yet, there is not a single member of the faculty, not a single student, who was there when it first began. And yet, you see, the university goes on. Because what goes on is a pattern, a form of life. In the same way, the individual body of man, every seven years, I think, all the molecules composing our physical structure are entirely changed. And yet, something identifiable as the pattern which we associate with Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, is still there. Another fascinating illustration of continuity of pattern in this sense is wave motion. It's perhaps easiest to illustrate with something like a barber's pole. When um, you twirl it, now as you twirl it, there's an illusion of something moving upwards from the bottom to the top of the pole. 
it seems that the strips go along. Now actually they don't go along. They just go round. And in the same way also when waves move across water, there's no water moving across. There is the wave pattern moving across. The water is just going up and down. As you can tell when you see, say, a dead leaf floating on the water's surface and uh, it isn't moved along by the waves. So this idea of continuity of pattern is the solution which Indian philosophy offers on the matter of the problem of death. The individual, as it were, entity is constantly changing. 